This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today I will be welcoming character actor Jimmy Stathis. Jimmy uh, played the lead in the 1982 very underrated horror classic, The Black Room. He'll be my second guest from that movie because I had Clara Perryman on last fall. He was also in uh, X-Ray, Ho- uh, a.k.a. Hotel um, Hospital Massacre. He'll be my second guest from that movie as well. He also was in the horror movie Dogs, and um, he was also in Vultures, another horror movie. Never even seen that one. And um, he's also uh, guest starred on many classic uh, TV shows like Police Woman, Emergency, Switch, The Six Million Dollar Man, and uh, so many others. It's going to be a great conversation today. As you all know, I love talking to my journeyman character actors, and I cannot wait. So, uh, yeah, here is my interview with Jimmy Stathis. Hello. Hey, Jimmy, welcome to the show. How are you today? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. And you? I am spectacular. This is such a great honor. Thank you for taking the time today. <laughs> so, going back in time, did you gravitate toward acting early on in your childhood? It started in Boston, where my dad, mm-hmm. um, he had a cab company, and he used to give me a cab now and then, and I'd, you know, drive it and collect the money and keep it. Mm-hmm. And on one of these drives, I picked up an agent in Boston. Mm-hmm. Eric Ross, that, that that was his name. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was just giving him a ride to his office. And he said, hey, you, you've got a pretty good look. Did you ever think about doing anything in showbiz? And I went, no. He <laughs> said, you know, give me your number just in case. So I gave him my phone number. <clears throat> about three weeks later, he called me up. And he asked me if I'd like to do a live on TV fashion show because... There were three guys, you know, hired to do it, mm-hmm. but it was when the Hong Kong flu was out. Wow. That was a flu that was out, you know, like 40 years ago or something like that. Yeah. And uh, I went, yeah. And so I did a fashion show, and then he started sending me on interviews. And so my career actually started in Boston. Then mm-hmm. a buddy of mine was coming out here, and I said, eh. I'll go with you. And we came out here, and uh, we got lucky. We were playing handball with a guy that was just leaving. And he said, you guys should just move into the house that I'm leaving. And that's what we did. And so that's how it started. Wow. And how old, how old were you at that time? What's that? And how old were you at that time? Uh, late 20s. Late 20s. I'm 77 now. Yeah. <laughs> so that was uh, what 40 years ago. So yeah. So um, you, so you were so you so you were driving cab and you 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 had no idea that you were going to be going into acting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's just the way it happened, and and then uh, you know I came out here mm. and I was dead for a, a bit. And then I got an agent, and I started going on interviews, and I and I got a few of those movies that, yeah, you know the names of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I hardly can remember. <laughs> yeah. But, so you. Yeah, it was it was good. Mm-hmm. So you you had never done at least a school play before that. No. No. Interesting. It was a rags to riches story, kind of. <laughs> so, according to IMDb, your first TV role was on Police Woman. Yeah, with Angie Dickinson, who I really liked, you know. Mm-hmm. But then, and then I met her, and I liked her even more. And I had a good time on that show. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Her and Earl Holloman. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I had heard that uh, she was very nice, and uh, she, but she hated doing that show. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know about that, but yeah, she, she was really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't show it or anything like that. No, no, and it was kind of a tough role because I, I get shot, you know, on that show. Mm -hmm. She had to help me, you know, so. We worked together for a bit. It was it was great. Yeah. And you had the legendary Robert Vaughn direct. The what? Uh, the the legendary Robert Vaughn directed. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I thought he was a great guy. Was he a good good guy, good guy to work with? Oh, good. Yeah, he was great for me. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. So. There's some great character actors in that episode. Charles Durkop, who I've been trying to get on the show. Uh, Carmine Caridi, uh, Paul Lambert. Yeah, that's a, that's a good first job oh. to have. Yeah, yeah. Then um, you do uh, a movie with James Mitchum called Trackdown. Yes. One of my... That might have been my first. I, I don't know. I, I can't remember that far back. Mm -hmm. That was that was fun. That was good. And, you know, I, I played a, like a mafioso doctor on that on that show. Yeah, uh, that led to a, a few more that were good. You know, kind of like um, X Ray. Yep. Did his? Did, um, I was curious. Did his father visit the set? Who's? Uh, James Mitchum. Yeah. One of the greats, yeah. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Um, you did an episode of uh, Emergency. Uh, did, do you remember anything about Jack Webb? Uh, no. No. I like the guys, the mm -hmm. Emergency guys that worked on the show. Mm hmm. Um. Yeah, that was fun. That, that and that was a big role. I got married on the show. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> that, that, that was a good job. Yeah. Emergency, yeah. Yeah, most people don't remember that one. It's like one of those ones that uh, didn't get much syndication play, you know? Ah, uh, well, it was good for me anyway. It was good for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about Switch? Oh, Switch was, uh, that was fun. That was a fun job, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I don't. I can't. I don't know what I can tell you about that show. Did Did you work with uh, Sharon Glass? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because I had her on um, recently. She's a lot of fun. Very nice lady. Oh, but you had Clara on. Yeah, Clara Perryman. Yeah. Yeah. Great gal, great gal. She was my wife. In uh, the Black Room. Black Room. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a pretty fun show. Yeah, so like, I last year I was on YouTube and this movie came up in like a search, um, uh, in, in like a search suggestion and it, the channel was called The Burial Ground and... I I I've been like obsessed with this movie ever since because it was so ahead of its time. This movie, you know, on in terms of of commenting on infidelity, swinging, polyamory, etc. You know, and I used to be in that lifestyle, so it was like a second language to me as I was watching it. You know, <laughs> did did you like aud did you like auditioned or get offered the part of Larry? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, God, what's his name? A lot of the people from them have passed on. Yeah. Yeah, so. It was um, yeah. Ellie Kenner and uh, Norman Thaddeus Vane. Yes. They were cool. They kind of co-produced that. I mean, co-directed it. Um, it was kind of strange in a way. But it was... It was a good shoot, though. 
Yeah. What, <clears throat> what did you think of the script when you read it? Um. Uh. I said, well, this sounds good. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I was reading it as, as putting myself as Larry in it. I think my name was Larry. Yeah. Yeah, Larry. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure being in Hollywood around that time and being around, you know, odd people, it was it was probably um, so it was probably something that you know you could relate to. In a way, yeah. I mean, it was it was a good it was a good start to my career. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, and I, I just kept going upward and upward, and you know, and I became like a commercial king. You know, I was the Gillette man. The Docker dude when Docker pants came out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, jobs like that, we're, which we're, helped me um, buy a house. Yeah. Were you Were you comfortable playing the lead uh, in a movie? <laughs> yeah. 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 It was. Uh, it was. It was just a fun. Uh, you know, it was, it was good. You're talking about the black room now, right? Yeah, playing the the black yeah. room. Yeah, but then I got to uh, uh what was yeah X-ray. Mm -hmm. I think they changed the name of that. I'm yeah, not sure. Um, Hospital massacre. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Much better name because that's what it was. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had uh, now, it, for me. It was exciting because I got to work with. Barbie Benton. Yeah. I don't. Do you know who that is? Oh yeah, Playboy. Yeah. She was gorgeous. Yeah, and she she was a, she was a good girl too. Yeah, I had I had yeah. John Van Ness on um, a, a year and a half ago or so. Uh, he's a good guy. What, what was he like to work with? He was good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, you get yeah. you. you uh, you get decapitated with a bone saw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like that part so much. <laughs> really? Did, did you, would you see that later? It was like, oh, why did I have to die like that? <laughs> <laughs> In a way, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. But the, yeah. That was the beginning. And it was a, it was a good beginning to my career. Mm -hmm. uh, lately, though, you wouldn't say that because uh, it's tough getting work if you're white and you're old. That's what my agent manager told me. Uh, Actually, yeah. recently, yeah. Ugh, a ageism is awful in Hollywood. Really awful. Oh yeah. You know. That's the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Back to the black room, though. I was wondering, what was uh, Cassandra Gava like to work with? Say that again? Cassandra Gava. Oh, she was... She was a trip, man. Mm -hmm. and, and Yeah, she was just... She was just a, a trip. She was funny, mm -hmm. but... And strange, in a strange way. Mm-hmm. I know that, that, that comes across on screen. You know, she had done... <laughs> She had done, um, you know, Conan the Barbarian around that same time, too. And uh -huh. playing those kind of characters. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But Clara, yeah, she's an, an awesome, an awesome person. You know, she's fun. You know, she likes to talk and all that stuff. Um, that scene where, uh, I, think it was, I think it's the first scene you two have together, where you're both in bed and she's talking about her first orgasm with the horse harness. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I told her. Yeah, I told her how great that was. And of course, those blood transfusions in it, that, that was creepy. That was one of the creepiest elements of the movie. It's almost vampire-like. Yeah. And, uh, uh, what's his name? I forget his name. Christopher, the, Christopher McDonald? Her brother. What's that? Christopher McDonald. No. This is one of his first movies. The other, the other lead guy. 
Stephen Knight? Uh, yes. Yeah. Stephen Knight. Yeah, he played her brother in the movie. Right. And he, you know, he was messed up. And, yeah. It was just uh, a bit crazy. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. It was. It was a quick shoot. Uh, well, it was a couple of weeks at a, a beautiful big mansion in Hollywood Hills that mm-hmm. no one lived in. It was just an empty, beautiful mansion. Yeah. Yeah. It was also Linnea Quigley's, uh, one of her first, like, horror movies. I've had her on here three times, and I wish, I wish before her and I had a falling out, I w- wish I had asked her about her little scene in this movie. I wish I had seen it. Yeah, she has no lines, but she gets to do her trademark scream in it. <laughs> oh. Oh. She, she plays, you know, a babysitter near the end. You made your first foray into horror with dogs. Yes. Yes. Was that a standard audition for you? Um, no, I was just given that part because I worked for those guys before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. That's kind of a crazy film right there. Dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, David McCallum, he's still going, that guy. I've heard he's a good guy to work with. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And, of course, Linda Gray, who went on to do uh, Dallas, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also a mm -hmm. great person. Yeah. Were the dogs well-behaved? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, the trainers were there, and the dogs were, like, good. Yeah. They knew what to do, <laughs> and not to bite. Yeah, they didn't have any um, any mechanical or fake dogs for, like, any of the uh, difficult, you know, attack scenes or anything? No. And I think that was, the movie came out before, you know, IA is, was in, you know, it's just, you had to do what you had to do, and that was that, yeah. Before before CGI, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You you did a, uh, what's yeah, that? You you did a horror movie after The Black Room I, I'd never seen, but I've heard of it, called Vultures. Yeah. 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 Is there anything I don't about, remember much about that. You don't remember much? Yeah, uh, Greg Malavy, uh, who was in it, I had I, he was one of my earliest podcast guests. Great, charming guy. I, I like him a lot. Do you remember anything about him? No, I wish I did, but I, I uh, for some reason, yeah, that whole thing was uh, a memory that I can't even bring up. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, were the birds real though? Again? Were the were the birds in that movie real? Yes. Hmm. Oh, uh, some were. Yeah. Some of them were. Do you remember anything about Stuart Whitman? Um, but he was a good guy. Yeah. I actually liked him before we even, you know. I mean, as an actor, I liked him. Yeah. And uh, wor- working with him was really good. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, yes. that, that guy did so many movies as I look at his career. And he did a lot of, you know, low budget, you know, grindhouse movies of, uh, you know, horror, sci-fi. And of course he did lots of Westerns, both of quality, non-quality TV. I mean, that guy was always working. Yep. You know, he was, and a, I was happy to work with him. <laughs> yeah, he was amazing. That guy. How about um, Drug Runners? Drug Runners was very cool because we shot half of it here in L.A. and half of it in Mexico. Right. And, um, yeah, that, that, was, that, that was a good job uh, for me anyway. Um, wow. Well, I don't know what I can tell you about that, except I was a cop who was hell-bent on revenge because mm-hmm. these guys killed my partner. And uh, I kill a lot of people in that movie, about 13. <laughs> <laughs> but I liked it. <laughs> you, 
Yeah, you also had uh, Aldo Ray. I mean, I'm sure that guy had stories. Oh, Aldo Ray was the best, you know. He's in heaven now, but yeah, he was uh, he was really a, a good, funny guy. Yeah, and he was trying not to drink. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he had a problem doing that. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he's uh, kind of famous, you know. Yeah. Since I did that movie, I'd see him every now and then pop up on these old, um, like, war movies. He played the tough sergeant, oh, yeah. you know, a few times, yeah. Oh, yeah, he did um, uh, Word No Angels with uh, Humphrey Bogart and Peter Ustinov. Yeah, I watched a, I watched a little bit of Drug Runners on, on YouTube the other day, and in the comment section, it said, "Bad movie, catchy theme song." <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah, it is, it is a pretty catchy theme song. It's very Miami Vice like, you know. It's got that kind of strumming, you know, guitar. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Kind of like that, but yeah, you're right. Tw twinging guitar, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you played a director in uh, Maryland, The Untold Story. Do you remember anything about that? Mm, no. No. <laughs> no. Sorry. Don't, don't remember Richard Bayshard or Vivica Linfors or anything? No, but that wasn't a big job for me. I think I was just on it for, you know. A couple days or something like that. Yeah, quick in and out. Yeah. Yeah. But the other movies I was the star of. Yeah. <laughs> a few of them, anyway. Yeah. Do you remember anything about guest starring on Eight is Enough? Um. No. <laughs> the, the, the Six Million Dollar Man? Well, that was pretty good. And uh, working with, um, Lee Majors. Uh, what's his name? The lead guy. Lee, Lee Majors. Uh, yeah, Majors, yeah. Another good guy who rescues me and another, Gerald McCraney. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, uh, he, he rescues us. We got stuck in a cave and there was an explosion. Wow. You bring him back some memories here. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. I bring up the uh, memories. Yeah, where are you getting all this information? IMDB. IMDB, oh, okay. Yeah. And if, I'll tell you, you know, without IMDB, I'd be lost, but there's a lot of misinformation on there. You know, they put, they put the rules on there for actors that they didn't even do for some reason that they're on there, you know, like maybe they have a similar uh, name as in the, as the the actual actor who did it or something, you know. Yeah, gotcha. Huh. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty interesting. They the, the, the what uh, what they do. Uh, Gerald McRaney, who of course went on to do Simon Simon, was in that episode. Did you work with him? I didn't work with him, but we did meet. Yeah. mm Hmm. I heard he's a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, I never met any really bad guys. Bad, bad guys. You know, most, most of them were like happy actors, happy to be working. Yeah, it seemed like that. It seemed like back yeah. then. You know, I mean, of course, e ego has always existed in the business, but it seems like back then actors were a lot more humble. They weren't. They weren't as rich as they are today. You know. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. There was just a, a, a real community amongst actors back then. And, of course, there was no Internet, you know. Everybody knew each other. It was just a real camaraderie. Yes, and I miss that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you, you went to auditions and you saw the same people over and over again. Yeah, I mean, you become friends, yeah. 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 There, it wasn't. It wasn't much of a competition then. Well, yeah, not like it is now. Nowadays, <laughs> can't even get an interview. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like the internet has really brought out the worst in people in terms of all of that, you know? Yes. Yeah. Do you remember... All the other things uh, mm -hmm. that you, goes along with it, yeah. Do you, yeah. Do, do you remember anything about guest starring on Providence? It was the pilot? No. 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 That was in 1999. Yeah, that was a great show. It was. It should have gone on for a decade, that show. It only lasted a few years. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you, so, are you, uh, so are you still acting at all these days? Uh, well, I'm just waiting for, for interviews. Mm-hmm. Now I'd have to say, no, no. I, my last job was on, uh, well, and that was a few years ago. I was on a house, you know, the doctor house. Mm -hmm. House. Yeah. Now that's a funny guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, tell me about that guy. And you know what my name was on the show? Dr. Pinto. Doctor, Dr. Pinto. Oh, you got it there. Yeah. <laughs> It's on IMDb, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that was a, uh, that was a fun experience. Yeah. That was a good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Hugh Laurie, he's a good actor. Oh, he's great. Funny. I mean, you know, he was like a stand-up comedian in England. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I really, yeah, I really liked him. We got along really well. Yeah, what a great cast here. Omar Epps, uh, Robert Sean Leonard, uh, Heather McComb. Yeah, that's that's a good cast that you worked with on that last one. Oh, yeah. I'm, cur mm -hmm. I'm curious, have you done much theater? No. No. no it, just a little bit, but not an even a, enough to talk about, yeah. It was, it was never your thing? Never my thing, no. Yeah. Uh, and it still isn't my thing. <laughs> it's a it's a completely different work ethic for sure. It's a, it's a, it's a young man's game as they say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so you don't have you don't have anything upcoming that you can mention. No. Wish I could. Wish I could, but I can't. No. <clears throat> I to I totally get yeah. that. Well, Jimmy, thank you so much for coming on today, and you know we got some, you know, we got some good stuff here. So it was, it was an honor to talk to you. Well, it was an honor to talk to you and to all the listeners. I'm, I'm glad someone's listening. Yeah. And uh, it's been good. Okay. Well, thank you. My pleasure, sir. You have a great day and be safe out there. And I hope you get something soon. I'll let you know if I do. <laughs> awesome. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Well, there you have it. Jimmy Stathis. Ain't he a cool dude? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this. You know, I, I wasn't expecting the interview to go the way that it, that it did, but I'm glad that I got to talk to him, and we got some, you know, talk about the black room there and stuff, right? But, um... I've been in this situation before, like, you know, a month ago when I talked to uh, Dave Friedman, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect with that interview, and it went a certain way that it did. But I'm glad, though, that at least, you know, I had the experience to find out, you know, some things about what was going on, so to speak. And I... <laughs> I hope I only get to have two, you know, this year and not three or four of these experiences. But hey, at least that's what I got and I'm grateful to it. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes. <laughs>